Hello and welcome back and can you believe it's been a little over a year since I reviewed this the QNAP TS464 here on the channel on the face of it that's not really that impressive frankly new NAS releases come out every month if not every year but it has to be said that despite me covering many different brands here on the channel in terms of network attached storage there are some solutions from some of those brands that always bubble to the top the fully featured solutions the populist solutions arguably the Reebok classic of all of the different respective brand solutions every few years during the refreshes and in the case of the QNAP the TS464 is kind of their fully featured SMB all bells and whistles prosumer solutions and despite when it arrived I had some very very nice things to say about the hardware and indeed the software innovations of QTS5 it has to be said that that was a year ago and the landscape has changed the level of hardware offered by its competitors has evolved indeed even QNAP themselves have released other solutions and in today's video I want to help you decide whether this device is still worth your time and your data one year since its original reviewed release and we're going to go through the good the bad and all the things that have happened so in this rather informal video let's get it out of the way straight away i got to review this in april 2022 but there were some users that were still waiting upwards of three or four months for availability of this device globally although i've known about it for a year i've been tinkering around with it and indeed it's been in the background of many 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 videos and been the device that i've shown off a lot of features and functions of QTS for the QNAP platform with there is no denying that QNAP was very slow to roll out stock on not only this but the two and the six bay releases in its portfolio in the 6.4 series so for a number of you that have just got hold of it it's only now that we've started to see the price point of this device originally knocking around when it was launched in some regions as high as 6 650 even close to 700 nicker it's only now we're starting to see the price point of this device settle down there at the 5 550 mark where a device like this should live in the respective portfolios of a lot of the devices out there so although i am talking about its availability for a year a number of you this may have even been a relatively recent purchase or consideration now we're only starting to see it on offer there but what about what you're getting for your money well first we'll talk about that cpu the cpu inside is the intel celeron n5105 a quad core 2.0 gigahertz cpu that can be burst up to 2.9 gigahertz a very very impressive cpu inside there with integrated graphics there on board that cpu also supports up to 16 gig of ddr4 memory with 4 gig arriving inside on a sodium um, module inside and again you can upgrade it with first and third party memory however you see fit so let's talk about that hardware straight away has that cpu and memory combo aged much in the last 12 months or so well not really despite when this arrived on the scene we its biggest competitor synology everyone was kind of looking at it going you know Ooh, when is the ds922 or 923 going to arrive from that brand and this was again way back in spring 2022 lots of users just assumed it would arrive with celeron assumed it would arrive with better network connectivity and assumed it would effectively be that 920 that was scaled up a little bit however when it did arrive it didn't have an integrated graphics processor there and indeed Synology started rolling out a lot of solutions that were non-integrated graphics CPUs going for uh, uh, AMD uh, in embedded Ryzen processors there so in the year that's passed since this although Synology has eventually rolled out an integrated Celeron processor NAS there in the form of the DS423 many users find it to be basically the 920 with a different badge there on the front and some of the features and services trimmed at the edges you know the wings clipped a little bit so a year later the ts464 if anything that hardware architecture has become even more desirable because it still continues to be in that bracket of the portfolios there that smb prosumer you know fully featured device with a hardware architecture that people quite like and integrating an n5000 series cpu not just relying on the j um, series that came before and that j4000 series that we saw rolled out in the ds423 indeed 
with that CPU and what it can do within the hardware architecture, that also opened up a Gen 3 architecture inside to a lot of the hardware features and capabilities of this. So rolling forward with that hardware, let's talk about the rest of this device one year later. Now it arrives with a couple of M2 NVMe slots inside and there's a PCIe Gen 3 times one obviously bandwidth restrictions in the chipset of the CPU and the lanes afforded to it. On the rear there, we've got two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports there. So again, not one GBE, couple of twos. We've also got USB 3.2 Gen 2, 10 gigabits per second, and an HDMI uh, 2.0, 4K, 60 frames per second output. And we have a PCIe Gen 3 times two slots, a 2000 megs per second upgrade slot there. Normally as a cover, but this has been in the office for a year in a million videos. Of course I've lost the cover. Um, but you can put an upgrade card in that. And the USB ports allow you to attach two, four, eight, and even 16 bay expansion devices. Now, at the time of my review last year, maybe I'll put a clip in, but otherwise I might quote it from the article. I tell you right now, I said this was very, very future-proof at the time for its position in the portfolio. And one year later, it still continues to be quite forward-thinking in terms of its hardware architecture there. Notwithstanding the fact that there is that enormous amount of expandability and support of the 10 gigabits per second USB ports on this device, but the um, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports there on the rear still have that scalability to adopt both the previous and current generation of QM2 cards from QNAP that have got a further M2 NVMe slot and have got 10 GBE, either raw or both together. And with QTS 5.1 now in beta, introducing improvements in QTIA, that wonderful single um, storage pool option to mix different kinds of media in order to leverage a, a cold, warm and hot tier of a single storage pool, this is still a great little architecture for the price point that, if anything, has only improved now the flexibility of that pricing and, indeed, hardware availability has improved on this device over time there. Um, I will say, though, when it comes to that hardware inside, the memory of 4 gig on site this we have seen memory shortages impact a lot of different nas brands and indeed non nas hardware out there as memory shortages have continued thereby leading to an increase in cost on devices or even just memory upgrade modules such as when we saw the two bay version of this device finally get rolled out at the end of 2022 for um, for global availability it arrived with 8 gig by default of pre-soldered memory now that is something that has not impacted this device it has impacted that two bay and the six arrives i believe with 8 gig by default but right now do not be surprised if you start seeing this device starting to roll out with a default 8 gig of memory instead of four somewhere down the line so that's another reason to just keep a little eye on that hardware availability there now yes when it comes to fast forwarding a year on this, we can't ignore the um, hardware restrictions on those PCI lanes, meaning if you do choose to use an M2 NVMe, you're going to be throttled to 1000 megs per bay. If you do use a PCI upgrade, you've only got 2000 megs to play with there. So do bear that in mind as we have seen um, the affordability of M2 NVMe's drop down and the range of PCI upgrade cards become a little bit more detailed there overall resulting in this system maybe making its uh, back step uh, bottlenecks be a little bit more obvious to you there and it's also worth touching on that in that year that has passed QNAP themselves have rolled out alternative solutions in their portfolio which arguably have kind of mucked up the range of where you spend your money what do I mean by that well I mean this box down here that is the TS453E. Now, the TS453E came out, I think, around four, four and a half months, depending on where you are in the world, after this one. And it overlaps this box way too much. And in the year that has gone since, it's become a choice for a lot of users where these two just seem too darn similar. This has got a quad-core seller on inside, but it's a J6000 CPU, arguably a newer, although lower clock speed processor inside. It arrives with 8 gig by default. It arrives with a couple of 2.5 um, gigabit Ethernet ports on the rear and the same HDMI. 
and it doesn't have a PCIe upgrade slot, but it does have two M2 Gen 3 times 2 slots, which means if you were never going to upgrade the network to 10G anyway, that system actually gives you a better bandwidth for those M2 NVMEs. <clears throat> what I'm saying is, one year since this device's release, this is actually becoming just a little bit more desirable to users that don't need that extra tinkering scalability there, that just want a banging box on day one for a lower price point than this. <clears throat> so although a year has passed, and I still recommend this in quite a, you know, many, many ways as a turnkey hardware solution, I will still state that in the year since, other options have become more apparent. And that is just the tip of the iceberg, by the way. There is a three bay, you've got your silent NAS there, you've got the M2, um, um, low noise NAS as well. The portfolio has expanded exponentially in the 12 months since this device was reviewed here on the channel. Now, we've got to talk software, we've got to talk security, haven't we? Because of all the brands I talk about here on the channel, very few uh, brands have got the same level of dents to their reputation in the last few years as QNAP when it comes to the software and security. Now, let's divide that into two subjects, the software and the security. Now, I'm gonna go for the software first, but I think we all know how the security is gonna go. But if we go for the software, QTS has definitely improved. If you watch my coverage of QTS 5.1, the beta where we did pretty, you know, a decent little dive as a preview piece onto that software. QTS 5.1 in beta now, that's gonna be presumably arriving as a full release in the next uh, three to four months, that software is where QTS 5 should have been. When QTS 5 was rolled out, just a short time after this device was reviewed here on the channel, it didn't feel complete. There was inconsistencies in the graphical presentation in some areas, some of the features did not feel out of full beta and ultimately QTS 5 although it looked better and improved a lot of the base level security improving a lot of a lot of the default level choices and the presentation of those choices to the end user and indeed the features of that software it's not been until QTS 5.1 at the start of 2023 that I think that software is now actually complete and even then it's still a beta so the software that's arrived with although it is fully featured there are loads of apps and services where wherever you want to use their own primary use a lot of their third-party stuff or just bare metal this in a synchronization with your existing cloud or cloud uh, based services now it's a lot in a, a better position in terms of that software than where it was 12 months ago with better features and services rolled out however security they're never really going to shake that reputation that they garnered when they were hit by ransomware attacks throughout 2020 and 2021 by a lot of users, and indeed 2022. Now, where the vulnerabilities from you know their responsibility and the end user responsibility with regards to updates, I really hate seagulls, um, but how much of the responsibilities fell on them and them not you know, proofing their software, allowing any backdoors on their software, not informing their end user base of things like auto updates and the necessity of updates and maybe restricting some services behind um, updates and then you can't use them if you don't. How much of that is their responsibility and how much is the end user not actioning things on board? We can't really quantify, but it is there's no denying that QNAP are still going to carry that reputation of insecurity for quite a few years to come. And I think if anything, in the year since I reviewed this box, things internally may have improved with their bounty program now being rolled out with a lot of the default states in their system. And I would say their security advisory being a lot hotter than it has been been in terms of how quickly it's actioning and sharing information there there's still no avoiding that they're going to carry the onus of that and if you are going to look at this as a purchase now in 2023 a year since its release for your own peace of mind maybe don't use their own cloud services for now maybe go towards Tailscale, use TeamViewer, use uh, third-party vpn tunnels to access this remotely but as a local access device it is fan Fantastic, but I think there is always going to be a contingent for another five, maybe even ten years that are going to look at the QNAP TS464 and other QNAP devices as not purely secure devices due to that checkered history, and they're just going to have to take their lumps over that time. Ultimately, 
one year since the review i would say for the most part this is an even more appealing purchase than it was a year ago they're definitely not going to roll out a replacement for it anytime soon and i think maybe we may be even be talking towards the end of 24 maybe even 25 before a formal refresh of this arrives so if that's what you're waiting for i wouldn't get comfortable um for this this to me is still a great NAS device and ultimately for your bang for your buck and for the capabilities that it brings to your disposal and its expandability and upgradability I still give it an enormous tick one year since that review that I gave for it where I think it's even more desirable it's just maybe in terms of security and reputation they are just gonna have to keep their head down stay humble for a little bit longer because i don't think they're going to get through it yet thank you so much for watching i hope you found this video helpful let me know in the comments if you have purchased this or if you didn't why didn't you or what did you go for instead if you're still on the fence about what you need use the free advice section link below on nas compares the blue button on the right hand side of the screen or alternatively use the free community forum at ask nas compares there and otherwise thank you so much for watching click like if you've enjoyed it subscribe to learn more there are guides on this device link below as well and i will see you next time